Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf. Gitin Samach Aleph, we are on the bottom of Samach Madbeis. Mitsudo is Chaya Vaifos on the last line. Mitsudo is Chaya Vaifos for dogim yesh behen gesel mishum darke shalom de Mishnah lists many halachis which are rooted in the idea of darke shalom to maintain peace and harmony. So, for instance, this halacha, you find a trapped animal inside a, a trap which had been set up by a hunter. Technically, that animal doesn't belong to the hunter, but one may not take out that animal. We consider it the property of that trapper, of that hunter, and again, it's because of dark shalem, just to maintain peace and harmony. But it's not really considered stealing, explains the Gemara. Well, it depends on the type of trap we're speaking about. But Uzli, suppose, it was, um, he set up a, a trap made of ropes, which has an interior. It's sort of a compartment which traps the animal, but it has a toich, it has an interior, in which the animal goes, v'oy hari, a similar type of system made of reeds. Now, in this case, says the Gemara Kuliyamali, there's no question between the Tanakama and the Mishnah, between Rabbi Yaisi, that, of course, it's considered stealing. It's gazel because, as Rashi says on the top line, the kiva and the yeshlehem toich, since it has a, a toich, an interior, kind of like kalev. They have a gazel gomer. Anything in there belongs to the owner of that, of that trap. Of course, taking it from there is considered stealing. Ki pligi belechi vekukri. The whole machlekes in the Mishnah, between Tanakama, who says, there's only an issue of Darke Shalim, whereas Rabiesi goes a step further. He says, uh, it has an element of stealing to it. We're speaking about different types of trapping system. Lechi and Kukri have no toich, there is no interior. So Rash said, Lechi, a chika, some sort of, um, maybe a hook, something that they... Um, they used to trap fish and animals, kukri, another type of, uh, like, hooking rod or some sort. So it has no, um, it has no toich, there's no interior, in which, uh, in which case the, the owner of that trap will be kind of anything. And in this case, we say it's merely ibn Darke Shalim, whereas according to Rabbi Yaisi, we go a step further, Midr Abbanan, we consider it Stealing. Now the Gemara will deal with that in a second. What's an afkamina? Whether it's only darke sholim or midra bonon, we consider it stealing. So let's move on. Metzias cheres shoyte vekaton. So cheres shoyte vekaton, who typically have no ability to acquire, but if they find an item in the street, once again you can't snatch it from them. Darke sholim. Rabbi Yisi Omer Gezel Gomer. It's absolute thievery. Now. Everybody agrees that in Omen HaTorah, it is not so. Omar Fchiz, the Gezel Gomer is only Medivrehem, the Rabbanon, considered stealing from a Cheresh or a Shoite of a Katan as, uh, as Gezel Gomer. It's only Medivrehem. But Men HaTorah, it's not really stealing, it's not really his. Never belonged to the Cheresh. So now, Laman of Kamina, what's the point of? mentioning that it's called Gezel Gomer Medivrayim. It's only Medirabana, which is pretty much what the Tanakhama is saying. Don't do it. So either way, you don't do it Medirabana. What's the Nafkemina? According to the Tanakhama, you can't extract the item from this thief. You're not supposed to do this. You shouldn't be taking it. But that's it. We don't take you to task. Took it, it's yours. Rabbi Yehi takes it a step further. It's Gezel Gomer, Midivrei, Midirabonon, we treat it as stealing, in which case they can go to the Bezden, to the Dayanim, to get it back. But of course, as Rashi explains, even according to Rabbi Yehi, it's not absolute stealing, Minat which would disqualify this person from being an aid. 
it's not considered being over a love of Lysigno of Lysigzo. It's only Midr Rabbanu. Oni Yamanaki Bereshazayis. Next example. A poor man knocking off those um, abandoned olives on top of the olive tree. Masha Tachtov. Whatever falls beneath him, whatever drops to the floor, again has the same idea. It's uh, usher to be taken. And uh, once again, Rabbi Yisi says, Gezel Gomer, which of course means Midrabana. Tana, we learned in a price. That's only if he's knocking it off. And he never, he never really took it into his hands. But in Likit, if he picked those olives and had it inside his hands, he was kind of Hare a gazel gummer. If somebody takes that from him. Right? That's Xela. So he took it, he picked it, and then he threw it down. That's his. There was a story with Rav Kahana. Hava Ka'azel Hutzel. He approached the city of Hutzel where Rav Yashia, Rav Yashia was the leader. Chazi. He notices this fellow, he was tossing sticks, branches. And he was knocking down the, uh, the dates off the tree. So he never actually held on to those dates. He just tripped them off the tree using this stick. So Rav Kahana went along, picked up uh, some of those dates and uh, consumed them. So this fellow was quite uh, agitated. Chazi Mar, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Rabbi, uh, you know, take a look, have a look. To be a doisha de I uh, actually threw those things down after holding them. It was out of my hands. So I was kind of Kenyan gummer, it's mine. What are you doing taking my fruit? So Rav Kana was impressed with this fellow who seemed to be learned. Oh, you hail from a Yashia's town who taught you the halachis, and that's why you're so educated. And he was impressed. Kori Alei, the tzaddik, he said, Oilam, the tzaddik, who establishes the world and influences the world and teaches and clarifies the halachas to his, uh, to his uh, followers. And that's why you knew all the halachas. So even if a guy happens to join the Jewish uh, paupers in collecting lekad shikha v'peya, we don't chase them away in order to maintain peace and harm. Tanar Rabbanim on this topic, we have many more, many more items. Mefarnasim aniyei nachrim, imaniyei Yisrael. So when we uh, a lot of money for tzedakah. If the Goyim come along with the Ani Yisrael, we provide for them as well. We don't discriminate. While we're visiting the Jewish sick, we also visit the non-Jewish sick. If we encounter those in need of burial, whether they're Yisrael or Nachrim, we bury them. Of course, as Rashi explains in separate burial uh, plots, but we look after everybody. And once again, all these halachas are based on these three words, Continues the Mishnah with several more examples of things which we do. We make exceptions for dark Shalim. Mashelas Isha Lachaverta, Hachashuda Halashviz. So we have two neighbors. One woman is not exactly so meticulous when it comes to Halachis of Shviz. She deals with forbidden fruits. And we have a Erlacha, upstanding woman who happens to be her neighbor, her friend. She can lend this um, suspected Isha the, uh, the tools needed to process her food. So Rachel, who's a tzaddikis, can lend Leah, the uh, questionable Isha, all types of uh, utensils, nafa, ukvara, sieves, sifters, verachayim, matana, grinders, and an oven to process her foods. Even though she is aware of the fact that Leah is perhaps less than careful in certain halachis, but you know she's not really at this point actively helping her process her fruits. She can just lend her the uh, the tools necessary. But she can't she can't actually participate in processing those foods. She can't actually sift or grind her her wheat together with her, as Rashi explains. Because 
one may not actively engage in assisting a transgressor when he's actually transgressing the Avera. So I can lend you what you need, but I can't actually participate and help you. Next example, Aisha's Chaber. You have a, a wife of a Chaber, upstanding uh, community member who is careful on uh, and all the halachas of Truma and Maser and uh, keeping things to her. So this woman, who'd like to keep a higher standard, is allowed to be nice to her friend. Mash Elis, Laisha's Amaretz, can lend the, the wife of an Amaretz, ordinary man who is not necessarily Naman and trusted when it comes to Maasroys. She, again, she can loan her all these utensils, not for Ukvara. Here comes a Chiddush. She can actually, in this case, she can, she can actually participate and give her a hand. Sift with her, grind with her. Another form of sifting. Even though, here's a Chiddush, even though the Eishas Amoretz is perhaps dealing with, with Tevel. And not, uh, not being responsible when it comes to Truma and Master. No problem. She can do that. And the Gemara will ask, of course, how? How come this is different than the previous halach where we don't allow her to actually actively participate? But she can do so up to a point until it gets into issues of Tuma Vatahara. Aval Meshetatalasa Mayim. We're speaking about a dough that she's making. So until she gets to the point of mixing the water, that's okay. But once she gets to that point and it starts getting into issues of Tumah V'tahara, which of course um, gets triggered when the, when the, you know, the item gets wet. It's called Huchshar L'Kabo Tumah, it becomes susceptible to Tumah. So once it gets to that point, now there's a more severe issue. The concern is that perhaps she's becoming, she's making the, the dough tummy, and of course we know that within your dough is a piece considered Chala, meant for the Kayin. It's like Truma, it's meant to be protected and remain to her. And therefore, at this point, Leitiga Ima, the Aisha's Chaber, may not physically uh, give it her a hand and actively participate in kneading that dough. The reason is, we never um, help and assist those who are engaged in Avera. And the Mishnah concludes, Vechula. Now, all these um, allowances, meaning the fact that we allow the Isha to lend her certain items in certain situations we're, we're really, you know, it shouldn't really be the case. We shouldn't be helping her out at all. But we make an exception. In order to keep the peace and harmony, so we allow a certain amount of camaraderie, but up to a point. And the mission concludes, If you see a guy plowing his field on Shemitah, you could boost him, uh, give him a good word, no problem. Even though he's working the fields on Shemitah, for him it's okay. Avaloide Yisrael, if you see Yisrael transgressing Hilchah Shemitah and plowing his field, we, we may not boost him, pat him on his back, tell him a good word, just turn the other way, show your displeasure. V'shayalam b'shleiman, and one more halacha, that one may greet a, a guy, even by saying Sholem, Sholem Aleichem, and Rashi says even though Sholem is one of Hashem's names, one may do so, Address the guy with Shalim. We play the Arke Shalim. Now here comes the obvious question. In case one of the Mishnah, we say, look, uh, you can lend the, uh, the Isha, who is Hashuda al Shviz, you can loan her all these uh, tools, but uh, actively involving yourself in what she's doing, that you cannot do. Right? Because you're being Messiah, an Isha, who's doing Avera, who's processing forbidden Shviz products. But then in the next case, with the Eishas Amaretz, who is less than careful regarding halachis of Trumas in Maser, there we say no problem. Not only is, he, is she loaning her the equipment, she's actually grinding and sifting. What do you mean? We're speaking about an Isha who's uh, neglecting Hilchas Trumas in Maestris. How could you be Messiah and her processing those products? What's the difference between the first part of the Mishnah where it's forbidden and the second part of the Mishnah where we don't seem to be concerned about Trumas and Masters? Um, Rabbi, very simple. For the most part, even Amiya Oretz are careful about Trumas and Masters. 
the fact that we consider products brought from Amoritz as Tevel, as uh, sorry, as Demai, which requires you know extra attention, but that's only with the Rabbana, it's a Chumrah. In the Torah, we follow the majority, and most Ami Oretz are careful, and therefore, it doesn't really concern us at this point. And she couldn't uh, grind and sift, no problem. B- because of Dark Shalom, of course. Rava Amar, Hocha Bama Oretz Rav Emir, Vituma Batara de Rabon. Rava says like this. No. You, you cannot uh, contend that for the most part Amya Oretz are careful of Trumas and Maestros. No. It's, it's a suffolk. It's uh, an even split, 50-50, and of course, uh, typically you can't be Messiah. This type of fellow for concern that he's neglecting Trumas and Maestros. Our mission, however, is speaking about a person who is Muchzok, who is known to be meticulous about Trumas and Maestros. He's an Amoritz, but he's careful about Truma and Maestros. He's an Amoritz Drav Meir. Which means that Rav Meir considers a person who's careful in Truma and Master, but not careful to maintain his Peris Bittahara. He allows his fruit to become, tar, to become tummy, no problem. Rav Meir considers him an Amoritz. So, according to Rameir, the title, the classification of Amaretz, applies to a fellow, even if he's careful in Master. If he's not careful in Truma, in, in, in Tuma Vatara, he's classified as Namaretz. And that's the Amaretz that the mission is speaking about. Asia's Amaretz is this type of person. So, of course, there's no concern about Master. He's careful. And so is she. What is she not careful about? The Tuma Vatara de Rabbanon. There's an Isra in allowing your produce in Eretz Yisrael to become tummy, and uh, that's the Isser, that's the concern here. That they're not paying attention to. So that explains the Mishnah. She can loan her the equipment. She can even help her. There's no concern of Maser at this point, but Mishata till Eshamayim. Once she pours the water into the flower. Now we have issues of Tumah v'tahara because it's susceptible to Tumah. It's Hoshul Kabo Tumah. Right? So therefore, at this point, you have to back out. The son, Ye'ezu Amoritz, who's classified as Namoritz, Kol She'ena Echel Chulav v'tahara. Divrav Meir, a person who's not careful to maintain his uh, food v'tahara. And that's the type of Amoritz that the mission is speaking about. Master, she's careful with, but not Tumah V'tahara. V'chachamim oimrim, kol she'enim ma'aser peroyz. V'chachamim disagree. They apply the title Amoritz only to a person who's not careful with Maeser. Again, our mission is her mayor. She's careful with Maeser, and therefore there's no concern until she wets her dough. Asks the Gemara. But we have a kasha on that. V'amidilitani seifa. So the Mishnah continues. Okay, but once the water is in there, and there is a potential issue of becoming tummy, of the dough becoming tummy, she has to back off. Right? So we have a diok here. Apparently the first part of that episode, until water was poured in, where we say she's allowed to participate, she's allowed to cooperate with the Eishes Hamaritz, and the mission explains it's only because of Dark Shalim. Typically, you wouldn't allow, but uh, Dark Shalim overrides that. But the question is, why? Why do we need Dark Shalim to allow this? Mechlal the Reisha Lab Betara Skin, and apparently, before she put in the water. The, uh, the flower was not yet it wasn't susceptible to tuma. So, so it's all clear. What's the problem? Why does the Mishnah explain that the the reason, the basis for allowing the uh, isha to participate, to, to cooperate with the isha Amaritz, at this point before water was put in, is merely make dark isha, make an exception. 
special allowance. Peace and harmony. Forget peace and harmony. There's no issue at all. There's no reason why not. Look, Maser, she's careful with. Tumma? <laughs> There's no Tumma potential before water is introduced. Answers the Gemara. Reisha v'sefa betuma, betahara. The truth is, as Rashi explains, the entire story. The first part of the story, second part of the story, is speaking that the parents were mechsharin. The flower was hukshal kabotuma. The difference is like this: v'reisha betuma shulim. Before this thing turned into a dough. At most. What's the issue? The chulin, the flower, will become tummy, which is only Isidra Bonan. And since we have the darky Sholem factor, that overrides, that allows it. The safer but the But the second part of the story, once you introduce the water to the flower and you start forming that dough, which is going to trigger the chiv and mitzvah of chala which has a status of truma, now you're running into more severe concerns because chala, truma, has to be maintained b'tahara and neglecting that is the isa doi raisa. Rashi brings a pasuk on the bottom here. V'seva b'tamas chala doi raisa. She'asur l'tama b'yad d'chsiv es m'shmeret truma yisai avad l'shimur. So the truth is the entire Story, we're talking about story number two in the Mishnah, Eishas Chavar, being Mash'elas L'Eishas Amaretz, poses a concern of, of merely Tum of Tahara. Again, Master is not a concern, we're going with Ramirez, classification of Amaretz, she's careful with Master. Within Tumah, we have two levels, Pre-Do and Post-Do. Pre-Do is merely a rabbinic concern, you're not allowed to be Metame, Tchulet in Eretz Yisrael, people want to be Tar, etc., so, that factor is sort of, you know, cast aside due to the dark Eish Sholem concern. She can cooperate at that point, help her out. But once you get to the dough forming stage, now we're running into an issue of Dei Raisa, because now it's has Chala in it, has Truma. At this point, she has to back off. Dark Eish Sholem is only a factor by the Rabbonans and not by Dei Raisa. That's the key to the Surya. Asks the Gemara. So you tell me you can be Messiah, you can help out, even if this fellow is not careful with Chulin Betuma. Veraminu, we have a cash. Veraminu, Toichlin Mafkidin Eitzloichle Shviz. So one is allowed to um, trust a fellow who is not careful with um, with Shemitah issues. You can grind your, your grain by him, you can uh, deposit uh, your, um, your grain with him. No problem. And there's no concern that he's going to go, you know, swap it and give you something else, uh, which is us. Or no. He's uh, trusted to um, to give you back the exact uh, material that you gave him. Okay? And likewise, you can do the same. You can deposit your uh, produce with people who are not careful, um, you know, to maintain Tahara on their... Uh, on their um, pay raise. Again, the point is, we're not concerned that perhaps he's going to flip it and switch it and give you back pay raise or pay raise which I told me. We assume that he's going to return your actual deposit. But, you may not be you can't service. You can't grind for an the person not careful of pay You can't grind or store fruit on behalf of somebody who's not careful with Tumma on his Paris. Right? Because you're assisting a transgressor. So again, you can trust him, but you can't help him. It's what's the kasha. A person is not Eichel Paris with Tumma. And we're speaking about Chulen. Cannot be assisted. Cannot be helped. What do you mean? In our Mishnah we learned that you can help the uh, neighbor even when she's involved in Paris Betumah as long as it's just Chulin, as long as it's just instead of Rabbonon 
So why is this different? Amr Abaye was speaking about an Issa the Raisa here. We're not speaking about Chulin Betumah. We're speaking about a coin who's suspected of having his Truma Betumah. He's doing an Issa Raisa, and that's why you can't help him out. Because as we explained, Darki Shalim only addresses a Surah de Rabbana, and not a Surah de Raisa. Asks the Gemara. So if this Brisa is speaking about a Kayin who is suspected of wrongdoing, Yachi, Mafkidin, so how could the Mishnah, the Brisa, allow you to trust him by entrusting him with your Peres? He might take your um, he might take your, your Truma and make a tummy. If he's not uh, meticulous, he's not careful about these things. But I'm Hinu. We have a riot from a Brisa that uh, you shouldn't be doing that. Mafkid and Truma it's Lisrol Amaretz. So one is allowed to take his Truma and uh, give it for, you know, for safekeeping by a Yisrael, even though he's not uh, of the highest standards. We're not concerned that he's going to tamper with your truma. But you can't do that with a koyin amaretz because he's not um, perturbed, he's not uh, you know, intimidated with truma, from truma. You know, he's, uh, it's his bread and butter. It's his... Uh, it's his standard fear. A coin and truma go together. So he doesn't get intimidated when he sees your truma and he might just tamper with it, might make a tummy. Right? So again, if the Brisa, back in the beginning of the Ahmed here, is discussing dealing with a coin who's less than careful, coin chashud, lechel truma betuma, then how could you be mafkid by him? How could the uh, Mishnah, the Brisa on the top line here say mafkidin. You can be mafkid your parents by the oichel peroisa betuma. We're speaking about a kain who's, who's not careful. You can't trust him. Amar Allah, you're right. But hacha b'mayaskidan was speaking about a special case where your safekeeping item is is protected. B'klicheres hamukav tzavon pasal askidan. We're speaking about the tvo which is inserted. Contained in a klicheres, a earthenware keli, a pottery, which is mukav tzamet pasal, which is sealed with a proper seal, which um, pretty much preempts any tampering. So that's why there's no concern. Asks the Gemara, but there's still a concern. Maybe the kain's wife, who happens to be a tummy at that point, will move the kli and make a tummy, even without touching the, you know, the interior and the and the content. She can still make a tummy by moving it. Ella Rab Yermia. So Rab Yermia says, I'll give you another answer which will address your concern. Like Kasha. The answer is like this. Come to Paris, Shehok Shuru. Brysa number one, which allows depositing with this coin. Is speaking, sorry, Brysa number two, which does not allow safe uh, depositing but with this coin. Is speaking about Paris, which are Hukshalika Botumma, susceptible to Tumma. So we have a concern that it might be Matame Yotruma. Come to Paris, Shalayuk Shuru. Whereas Bryson number one is speaking that the parents were not hukshal kabatuma, so even if the kain, even if the kain is not careful, but there's nothing you can do. No damage will be done to your parents, which are not hukshal kabatuma. Asks the Gemara another kasha. For we have a kasha from another Bryce. Hamoyle chitin l'toichan kusi l'toichan amaaretz. If a person decides to use the services of a kuti or amaaretz. Bring him, bring, bringing him your his grain and um, asking him to grind it for you. There's no concern that perhaps the um, the uh, fellow uh, switched your uh, grain with somebody else's, uh, which was not maisered, which has an issue of shvius. No, we assume he returns um, your your uh, your wheat and uh, not. Uh, Rather than switching, it, you know, we're not concerned that he switched it. Okay, avaloilu tuma. That's when it comes to maser and shvius, but not when it comes to a question of tuma, which means basically that we're chayshish. We're concerned that perhaps the uh, the um, the mill owner, the kuti, the amaretz, tampered with your uh, stuff. He touched it directly and made a tummy. Right. So here we see there's a concern of. Uh, of Tumavatahara and um, 
you know, we're not speaking about a Truma and an Akayan, we're speaking about an ordinary person, and we're concerned that he was metami your stuff. And there we say, in Bryce number one and in Bryce number two, we say that, you know, there's no concern with uh, being mafkid by an Amaretz. We're not concerned that he was metami. Asks the Gemara, what do you mean? We just answered that question a minute ago. All depends on circumstance. All depends whether the Paris are susceptible to Tum. Hi, my room. What kind of, why are we asking this question? Lava Kim, haven't we just provided that distinction? The Paris, Shalayuk Shuru. That the um, Bryce, which allows being mafkid by an Amaretz without concern of Tumas, speaking about Paris, which are not Huksha. Apparently, this Bryce that we just quoted is speaking that it was Huksha, which poses a concern of Tumas. Well, why are you asking this question again? But the Ka'arila, the one who asked the question, my Ka'arila, what was he thinking? Why was he presenting this as a question? The answer is, you're right. He was, he didn't really think it would be a kasha. But the reason why he brought up this price was to bring out another point, totally different point, to ask a question from a different direction, so to speak. Mishum de Kaboyle mir machriti Allah. We mentioned this price in order to introduce a new idea which would have, which would, is going to be challenged from another price. You see, here we just said, you can use the grinder's services and without a concern of switching. You can assume that you got back what you gave him and, you know, you maintain the same uh, status regarding Master and Shviyas, no change. Really, we're not concerned about swapping. We have a kasha. So, this son-in-law is an upstanding fellow, he's a chaver, meticulous in halachis and truma and tara and everything. And he um, he has a dough and he gives it to his mother-in-law. And she's uh, not necessarily so learned like him. She's not maritz. So before he gives anything to her, he has to take off maser for concern that she might eat it. And likewise, when he gets it back from her, once again he has to separate Master. You know why? Because she might have swapped it for him. She suspected of swapping something which she considers perhaps uh, spoiled, meaning she doesn't want to give him back something spoiled, and if she perceives it as having spoiled, she'll swap it with something else. So therefore you have to be careful, help her out, Make sure that whatever you give her, which she eventually might consume herself, is misered, and likewise, whatever you take from her. Apparently, we're concerned about swapping. It says the more big difference. Hasam. Tama. The reason why, in that case, we're concerned about swapping is because of the reason giving, uh, given. Amar Vyuda writes, Sahibet HaKonaz Bito Baishem HaChasna. What about her mother-in-law? Who's trying to protect her daughter. And she wants to impress her son-in-law. <laughs> so, yeah. There we have a concern about swapping, but typically a stranger, why would he swap your product? By a stranger, we're not concerned about Tanan, no, not Pundakis. So a fellow staying in an inn, bed and breakfast inn, and, um, you know, he uh, he has some food with him. He asks the uh, hostess to, uh, you know, put it in the fridge for him. Once again, both ways, you have to miser what you give her and what you take. We're concerned that she might swap it. Apparently, swapping is a concern. Answers the Gemara, Hasam Moira. Vamra. There she has a Moira Heter. <laughs> Meaning, she vanfers herself, she excuses herself. That she has good, in- she has good intentions. And that's why she's doing it. She's not doing it to be, you know, uh, dishonest. She says like this, Vamra, Bar Bey Rav, this Talmud Chacham here visiting, Leichel Chamim, I want to give him, you know, warm, fresh bread. I'll eat the uh, cool, uh, you know, older bread. It's an expression. It means to say, it's a couple of days later. She doesn't want to give him back his old bread. So she keeps her, uh, his bread. She makes her nefesh and gives him something fresh. That's why she swapped it. But again, typically, we're not concerned about swapping. Unless there's a special reason. But you have a b'risa. Eishas chaver. Toichenes le'eishas im eishas amoritz. You have an eishas chaver, upstanding woman. There's a lot to grind together with the eishas amoritz. Help her out uh, in her uh, grinding. Only when the Isha's chaver happens to be in a state of tumah, 
which preempts any concerns of her, you know, reaching in and partaking from the uh, Amaretz's food. Because she's accustomed to keep away when she's tummy, she, you know, careful not to touch anything. So at that point, there's no concern that she'll eat from the Eishas Amaretz. But if the Eishas Chavar happens to be in a state of Tahara, she's liable to uh, reach out and, you know, pick up some food from the Eishas Amaretz and eat it. So therefore, she shouldn't be involved. She shouldn't be helping her grind. Lest she partake in the forbidden foods from the Amaretz. Rabbi Shemal Azoimah Ap is Manshi Yitzmei Lo even when she's in a state of tumma, she should not be involved in grinding the Eishas Amaris's material. Because although she perhaps won't reach out, won't initiate, but the friend, the Amaris, might actually pick up something and give it to her. Which is a problem because of the Maser, which perhaps was not separated. Okay, so that's the Allah. Question is, So, here we have Halacha, which is based on a concern that the Aishas Amaretz will steal. You know, this is her husband's, she, you know, everything that she's doing belongs to her husband, right? She'll take her husband's food, steal and give it to her friendly visitor, the Aishas Chavar. Hashta mingav mignav gun v'chalifla mechlafa. If she steals, don't you think she's liable to swap as well? Switch things? And here we say a whole sugya that uh, whenever chayshish uh, we can deposit things for safekeeping, we're not chayshish for swapping. Amr of Yisav Hasav Nami Mari Amr. Typically, there's no concern about swapping for no good reason. But here, there's a special moira hetter. She's fearing herself. She's excusing herself. She says, "Look, uh, you know, my friend here is uh, putting in all this effort to help me grind my husband's uh, wheat, taira, an ox." was allowed to eat some of the material that he's threshing. That's the halacha, right? One must allow the animal to uh, so sample the foods that he's working with. So that's her excuse. But typically, there's no reason to think, to suspect that, uh, you know, the Amaretz, uh, whoever he is, will swap, will switch things. You can be assured that whatever you get back is what you gave him. Okay, let's summarize today's daf. So we spoke about many, many uh, items which are based on dark Sholem, first of which was don't take away, uh, any, don't take out anything from the trap. Dark Sholem. And the Gemara says, of course, if it has a toich, it would be considered gezel gomer. Matthias Cher Shaitav in the same story. Dark Sholem. Rabbi Yezus says, gezel gomer midirabonon. The only knocking off those olives. Again, those are Dark Yisholim, unless he actually took them into his possession. That would be considered a Gezel Gomer. We have the story with uh, Rav Kahana, with this fellow in Hutzal, who was impressed with, him, with his knowledge based on um, uh, the halachas taught to them by Rav Yashia. We um, address the needs of Aniyei Nachrim. Talking about Aniyei Nachrim, you know, Rav Moshe Feinstein used to send out uh, Stucker checks to many, many uh, stuckers and moistes, and they bring down that amongst his uh, moistes, amongst his uh, recipients, were several um, non-Jewish organizations, especially ones who were dealing with mental, uh, you know, um, mental, uh, you know, uh, mentally ill patients, etc. And he, he felt that it was important for us to participate and contribute to those charities as well, especially he says like rabban and rabbis should be perceived as looking out for the you know, betterment of the entire community. He felt it was a Kiddush Hashem, and that's fully in line with our Gemara, Yom Rafanis, all the Goyim, Mavakar, all the Choylem, and Kaver, all the Mesa. The next so we have an interesting, we have an interesting um, distinction um, you know, between participating in something which has a possible Isadei Raisa, that we're not allowed to do, that's called Mesayeya, Udei Oivir Avira, so it involves being Matamit Shrumo, or involves working on Shemitah, you're not meant to pat them on the back and assist them and encourage them. However, when it comes to merely Yisurah de Rabbonon, there, um, the mission does allow it, and it's based on Dark Yisholim. Then we went into a sugi about uh, a concern of swapping, of being machlif, and the Gemara concluded that, um, you know, other than some, you know, exceptional cases, like a mother-in-law who's looking after your good, or a uh, Pundakis with the Talmud Chacham, or in the case of the uh, uh, neighbor who is benefiting from your uh, uh, you know, help. Otherwise, 
Um, we're typically, we're not choshesh for uh, lachlufin, and uh, rest assured that, um, you know, whatever he returns to you is assumed to be the item that you gave him. All the best to you, and Hatzlacha Rabbah.